Hey there everybody, Jeremy Siskin here. I am the author of Playing Solo Jazz Piano, and I recently recorded a video about playing fast and how we can use outlining to make playing fast feel easier, smoother, and we can get better sounds. And this is kind of a follow-up to the video, and it's based on a subscriber who was asking about uh, playing Donna Lee, uh, one of the hardest bebop tunes generally played very quickly, right? If you haven't heard it, uh, you should go listen to it. Etc. Now, in one of my first lessons with Fred Hirsch, he told me the key to Donna Lee was being able to do this. Um, and I had no idea what he was talking about. Um, and by the end of this video, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So this is actually based on another principle from Abby Whiteside and Sophia Rosoff called clustering. Um, and again, I really recommend you checking out that outlining video if you haven't. Um, that's another Sophia Rosoff, Abby Whiteside principle. And here's the idea with clustering. So if I'm going to play a C major scale, basically we can divide this into hand positions instead of thinking of it as individual notes. So we put these first three notes together, then these next four, then these next three, and then we have five here. So now I'm thinking of the C major scale in hand positions, and I'm going to move kind of quickly. Hey, look, there's my entire C major scale, right? And then one way that we can use these hand positions um, to get into really good playing habits is by repeating the notes one time for each note that you would actually be playing. So for this, C, D, E, we would be playing three different notes. C, D, E. So I would repeat it three times. For this next hand position, F, G, A, B, we would repeat that four times for the four notes. So if I'm performing it, it would be... So I'm playing it just the same number of times and in the same rhythm that I would if I were to play it as a full scale. So one more time, check that out. Okay, and I'm also trying to shape it. I'm not just going... I'm trying to pretend at least, you know, I know that this isn't the most constant thing you've ever heard, but I'm trying to pretend that it's a phrase. Okay, which brings us back to Donna Lee. Um, now, you could certainly finger this melody a number of different ways, but the way that I finger it and the way that Fred showed me... So again, you want to get really comfortable with those hand positions. Because if you have this, all you have to do is be able to move in between those hand positions. Okay. Now, this is a little bit more complicated than the C major scale. Well, <laughs> it's a lot more complicated than the C major scale, but rhythmically, it's a little bit different. It's still mostly eighth notes, but now we have this turn at the beginning, right? So we're going to want to repeat for that turn. And I love these repetitions because they get this whole playing mechanism involved. I can't just be thinking up and down anymore. I have to really have my arm, my wrist and forearm uh, going and engaged. I'm doing a nice lift off at the end of that. I hope you notice. trouble with these repeated notes, first of all, make sure that nothing's tense. The first thing that we often do uh, when we encounter repeated notes is tense up. And if you tense up, then everything becomes locked and it becomes difficult to repeat. Um, you want to bounce kind of like you're dribbling a basketball. The other best advice I've gotten on repeated notes is to think about going up instead of down. It's relatively easy to go down, but you want to get off that key so that you can repeat it again. So. It's important, it's as important to get off the key to come off of it as it is to uh, go down into it. After you get really good at doing that, you're able to play that. My fingers are making.
spending so little effort because they're already in their positions, right? They don't have to do that much. And let me take this one step further. I know a lot of people out there are interested in improvisation. And I think one of the best things that you can do as an improviser is find some great hand positions. So oftentimes uh, for a first improvisation lesson, I you know tell my students, well, just match your right hand to your left hand. So if, you know, if you're doing this two, five, one, here, my right hand and my left hand are playing the same thing, just two octaves apart, right? If you play some good rhythm, um, you can use these hand positions to sound pretty good. advanced, you can use some slightly more advanced hand positions, right? So instead of starting on the root, you could start with your thumb on the third and have the third, fifth, seventh, and ninth of the chord. So this is a D minor chord here. And my right hand, it looks, it actually sounds like it's playing an F major seven because I'm playing the third, fifth, seventh, and ninth. And I'm going to similarly move down in this C major kind of two, five, one. put in a flat nine on the G7. And then it sounds like I have a diminished chord now. And there's a bunch of other options. You could keep this E on top and play F, A flat, B, and E over the G7. You know, and Maybe you don't need this for a simple 2-5-1 in C major, but maybe if the chords are going really fast, like I always think of the end of How High the Moon. Right, where it's going. You know, for me it's really helpful to be able to find Crossovers, cross unders go all around the piano if I'm playing, you know, this fast. Um, so that's some ways that you can use clustering and hand positions, two very interrelated concepts. Hand positions are what you ha might be holding under your hand, and clustering is the process of repeating that, um, practicing uh, different hand positions, and then repeating them in rhythm until you're. Um, really feeling the rhythm, um, outlining the phrasing in terms of your playing mechanism, and getting used to making this kind of up and down phrase shape so that you can get... You can simplify all of these notes into fewer hand positions. So I hope that's helpful. Um, I always appreciate it when people check out my book. It's called Playing Solo Jazz Piano, best purchased at jeremysiskin.com. And stay tuned, I'm trying to release at least one new instructional video a week.